This is The Herd. Wherever you may be and however you may be listening, live in Los Angeles, iHeartRadio, Fox Sports Radio, and FS1. It's roll up the sleeves time. Jenny Taft is joining me. NBA breaking news. All This is what the NBA does, baby. Stories. U.S. Open this weekend. We were looking for one story. The NBA, we've got a dozen today. Possibly several breaking. Bill Simmons joins me in 35 minutes. Jenny, how are you? I'm great. I know you're excited, so I'm just ready for all this. Well, here's what rich guys don't like to be cornered. Rich guys like to have options. And so here's what happened last night. And here's my takeaway on what happened last night. Again, rich guys want to leave themselves wiggle room. Rich guys don't get rich because they've been trapped in their entire life. And there's two really rich guys in Cleveland. There's LeBron, and then there's Dan Gilbert. Neither one wants to be trapped. This is why LeBron always signs these shorter deals so he can leave. So David Griffin wanted a raise. He was the GM of the Cavs, and Dan Gilbert's like, nah. Dan Gilbert's never really cared as the owner of the Cavs for GMs. He wants to be in on these deals. Dan Gilbert, a little bit like Billy Bean and Moneyball's not going to pay his manager much. Dan Gilbert's like, ah, I'm not going to pay my GM much. So Dan Gilbert, the owner of the Cavs, doesn't give David Griffin the GM a raise, and David Griffin's out. Now, LeBron James, though, this is what we always talk about with LeBron. Rich guys don't allow themselves to get trapped. Mark Cuban's not getting trapped. Bill Gates doesn't get trapped. LeBron sent out a tweet last night in support of David Griffin. Now, I don't know how close they were, but it does leave LeBron wiggle room. Here's the quote. If nobody appreciated you, Griff, I did. And hopefully all the people in Cleveland, thanks for what you did for the team for three years We got us one. Now, what is that allowing LeBron James? Ah, it's leaving him an out. But if he does leave Cleveland, he can say, I got you a title. I mean, man, they they ran the GM out of town who I really liked. It gives him an out. Now, you say to yourself, Dan Gilbert. This is bad for Dan Gilbert. The winner in this is actually the Cleveland fans. Because by letting go of the GM and then LeBron publicly supporting the GM, it makes Dan Gilbert, who's a deal maker by DNA, he's good at it. He's a deal maker. He's in the mortgage business. He's in the real estate business. He's a deal maker. He now has to sign either Jimmy Butler or Paul George. You can't not give LeBron a star and get rid of the GM that he publicly supported. Or you're just giving him an open door to leave. And LeBron says, hey, you couldn't get me somebody I wanted him. You you got rid of the GM I wanted. So both guys now, here's their situation. LeBron's got an out. GM not re-signed. The second thing is, Dan Gilbert now, the pressure is on him to sign either Jimmy Butler or Paul George. I believe they're going to get one of them really soon. Now, my feeling is, and I've been texting this morning to find this out, LeBron would prefer Paul George. He's closer to him. Uh, Paul's game works better with LeBron James. Better spot-up shooter. But Paul George has said he wanted to be a Laker, and Dan Gilbert's a rich guy who doesn't want to be cornered. Dan Gilbert's thinking, yeah, Paul George is better for LeBron, but I don't even know if LeBron's going to be here in two years. I think Dan Gilbert wants Jimmy Butler, who's got a couple of years on his contract, because if LeBron did bolt, Dan Gilbert's like, I'd have Jimmy Butler, and I'd have Kyrie Irving, and we'd still be good, and we'd have some cap room, and I could get other players. So here's the rub in Cleveland today. LeBron's got an out, and I think it's going to come down to who does Dan Gilbert want? Because I think he's got to deliver on one of these guys. Paul George or Jimmy Butler? I think LeBron likes Paul George. I think Dan Gilbert, I don't blame him here. Dan Gilbert's like, I'm a billionaire for a reason. I'm not getting trapped here with LeBron. He wants Jimmy Butler, who's got a longer tail, a longer contract here. So that's the rub this morning. Now, this this plays out for a lot of reasons. So in all this, here's what we know about the NBA right now. Boston's got a million draft picks, and they may get Gordon Hayward. Cleveland's probably going to land Paul George or Jimmy Butler, I think the latter. So let me just throw this out in regards to the Lakers. So the Lakers, according to uh, several sources, are trying to accumulate more draft picks. 
They're trying to get more and more draft picks because they want to eventually get Paul George, and they're concerned that Indiana is going to get a better offer from a Boston or a Chicago or a Cleveland, and all of a sudden Paul George is going to go to a better team and a better franchise, and then the Lakers can't get him. Here's what's interesting in the Lakers situation is that they don't have a lot to give. They simply don't have a lot to give. And this is the downside for the Lakers when you tank. Three teams in the NBA are tanking. Phoenix has been tanking. Philly's been tanking. And the Lakers have been tanking. And this morning, they all have the exact same amount of assets. One player they really like, Devin Booker, Brandon Ingram, Ben Simmons, and then a good draft pick. That is the downside to tanking. So the Lakers are in a very interesting situation here. They need some things to happen, and I think they could get breaks. First of all, they need to pick Lonzo Ball. Good for business and commerce. I think they will. Second, they need the Cavs to make a deal for Jimmy Butler instead of Paul George. I think they will. Third, they need Boston to pass on Paul George. Because if he goes to Boston, players like to play in Boston. Players like to play for Brad Stevens. Players don't necessarily leave Boston in their prime. They like Boston. And I don't think the Celtics are going to give much away for Paul George. That is very, very good news for the Lakers. Because Dan Gilbert, I think, goes Butler. Celtics going to pass on him. And that means Kevin Pritchard. What can Kevin Pritchard get? The Indiana GM. What can he get for Paul George? Because Paul says he wants to go to the Lakers. I think what's happening could give the Lakers a little opening here. Give away a D'Angelo Russell, maybe. Give away a Julius Randle. Give away a late first. It ain't great. But if Boston and Cleveland are out, they have something they could give you. Boston could give you a lot of draft picks and a decent player. They could give you an Avery Bradley. They could give you a ton of draft picks. I don't think they'll go after Paul George. Cleveland could give you Kevin Love. That's better than what the Lakers had. I don't think they're going to go after him. I think they're going after Jimmy Butler. So in this big picture this morning, that tweet by LeBron James, just that tweet, think about how many things it does. It opens the door for LeBron to leave. It puts pressure on Dan Gilbert, who will probably go Jimmy Butler. It could help the Lakers because Jimmy's off the market. Paul doesn't go to Cleveland, and Paul ultimately wants to go to the Lakers, and with two big suitors out, Cleveland and Boston, that may help the Lakers. So we have a lot of things going on right now. And let me throw one more thing at you. There is a lot of questions about where LeBron goes. My belief is, and we'll throw the numbers up here for you, this is my belief on LeBron James and LeBron James' future. I think 75% he stays in Cleveland. Gilbert gets him a good running mate, a Jimmy Butler, and he stays. I think the field is about 5%. But I think the Clippers, keep your eye on the Clippers. I, I give them a 20% chance, and I'll give you a handful of reasons. I think there's four or five things that are a big deal. Jerry West has signed with the Clippers. Jerry West is... The logo is absolutely respected. I would say he's the only 79-year-old guy in the NBA that young stars respect and revere. He's now a Clipper. I've been told one of the reasons Ballmer's going to pay him $5 million bucks a year, he thinks he can induce the interview with um, LeBron. Number two, the Clippers have a new arena coming. LeBron could help be part of that. Number three, Steve Ballmer's net worth. Number four, Chris Paul, friend of LeBron. Number five, the business in L.A. So in all this stuff, talking about LeBron, the tweets this morning, there are four or five reasons I do believe the Clippers are the only team outside of Cleveland with a shot to get LeBron. Paul, Jerry West, business opportunities, new arena, and don't forget, Steve Ballmer is a smart progressive owner and it, it it he is a guy that paid almost all cash for that puppy they're making money with the clippers it wouldn't shock me if there was a handshake deal at some level lebron wants to get into ownership and an la team with a new arena is going to be worth a lot more than a cleveland team that wouldn't have lebron or potentially an early retiring kyrie so 
There we go. That's what we have this morning. I think uh, I, I, th- I think there's a lot of things happening. I think we could have a story breaking today on the show. I think Cleveland's going to get something done quickly. I think Indiana, Indiana wants to get Paul George out of town. Um, we've already got a Celtic Sixers trade for draft picks. I think the Lakers are trying to accumulate more draft picks. I would be semi-surprised if by some point today – there wasn't more happening or a deal done in the NBA. It's a very exciting time. And this is what the NBA does better than any league. Creates stories. We've got a ton of them this morning. Hi, everybody. It's Colin. You know I love perky jerky. So much so, I invested in it. Different, crazy good flavors. Jammin' Jamaican, sweet and snappy, original. Why do you have to choose? There's no fun in that. The new variety pack is a jerky lover's dream. Fans need choices, too. Otherwise, life and sports gets boring real fast. Try a different flavor. Every game special offer 40% off all multi-packs. Please use the code HERD. It's the best tasting jerky on earth, guaranteed. Get it at perkyjerky.com, code HERD. Bill Simmons has a podcast, Malcolm Gladwell and Judd Apatow. Yeah, pretty big names on that. TheRinger.com is his, too. Bill Simmons. Bill, how are you this morning? I'm good. I was I was driving into work today, and you've already said 19 things that I disagreed with. So we're off to a good start. <laughs> First of all, I don't have any facts this morning. It's speculation, which is part of what I do. Let Let's go to the Let's go to this. Jimmy Butler, <laughs> Paul George. Okay, Jimmy Butler, yeah. Paul George. Who do you think LeBron would rather play for? Play with. Play play with. Excuse me, I'm wrong. Play well, with. Hold on. Can, can we go backwards? I. You already have LeBron heading to the Clippers, and you've completely discounted the Lakers. I think the Lakers have, I would say, five times a better chance of landing LeBron than oh, the Clippers. That dysfunctional, Maybe ten times. That dysfunctional ownership? What's dysfunctional about it? They got Rob Polanco and they got Magic Johnson. It's the Lakers. You, you're acting like the Clippers matter. The Clippers missed their window in 2014 and 2015. Chris Paul is now... What's he going to be, 32, 33 this year? Year 13? Could not make it through round one of a playoff series without wearing down. Lasted six games. They were already talking about, wow, Chris is wearing down. Yeah, Blake, who's had, I don't know, how many surgeries and injuries has he had? Like eight or nine? You have Jamal Crawford and Austin Rivers making $27 million a year. You have DeAndre, who... We, it's unclear if he can be even be a center in the finals that I just watched, whether he could even stay in the court. And you have a lot of dysfunction. Like, I, Why would LeBron go to the Clippers? Why wouldn't he go to the Lakers? Because they have, they a, have star. a bunch of young players. Yeah, but none of, them are, none of them are any good. They're all C+. What do you mean they have a star? Who, who? who? Chris Paul? Chris Paul needs the ball all the time. Did you watch the finals? LeBron James always has the ball. Kyrie Irving stands over to the side. Chris Paul can't do that. He doesn't play like that. It's going to be the Lakers. It's going to happen. You Oh, you think it's going to happen? I think it's going to happen. I've been saying on my pod for the last couple of weeks, I, I think it's going to happen. I think that explains a lot of what we saw this week with uh, the David Griffin thing and Dan Gilbert, which I thought was crazy. But, you know, you have David Griffin, who's the GM of the Cavs, who's making phone calls about trades and gets relieved of his duties the same day he's calling teams and making trades. Do you remember that happening before? Nope. That's nuts. So obviously he was trying to either convince Gilbert to blow it up because LeBron's leaving a year and make some giant home run swing to try to keep him, or just felt like, you know, that, that this was headed nowhere. Maybe we should trade everybody and just rebuild. Like, who knows what happened? I can't wait to find out. But What, what is your gut on – see, I think Dan Gilbert, and I said this yesterday, Boston – is doing it the long term, don't blow up your 401k, they should do that. That's their history. Smart, stable, educated, kids went to Wharton. But but Cleveland's been a hot mess, okay? They're a Powerball yeah. family. Okay, I, well, get, I get them dumping the They won the, the title, though. Well, yeah, that's great, but they're not really a franchise. They're just LeBron. He leaves, what are they? That's all they are. They're they're not they're not they're just they're not Boston historically. They're not San Antonio. They're LeBron. Do you think Dan Gilbert thinks this morning? Do yeah. you now what is Dan does he think LeBron stays or goes? Does he think okay, I'll land Jimmy Butler, LeBron stays? What do you think he's thinking? I think he's thinking I have one more year with LeBron. I'm gonna try to win a title. 
and I don't want to ruin my long-term future because what LeBron did since the moment he got there was was basically close the window so that it was four years, five years, and that's it. You know, every move they made, every cap-clogging signing they made made it impossible to, to fix or really change this roster unless they trade Kyrie or Kevin Love. So, you know, if you're Gilbert, you, you, you made this deal with LeBron, you brought him back. If LeBron was going to stay for 12 years, then you then don't you just keep Andrew Wiggins? And don't and you don't make the Wiggins for love trade. You don't try to win now. You try to actually build something like Wiggins, who I think is a really good player. I don't think yeah. he's a top twenty-five player, but he's a good player. But he was on a rookie contract, so you know you have him for seven million versus Kevin Love for twenty, who you then have to re-sign. Now you have to go get J.R. Smith and Iman Shumpert, who they're paying like twenty-seven million a year to play the Wiggins position, who he could have played for seven. You would add more cap space, but that's my point: is that. It's becoming more and more clear that this was a short-term arrangement to try to win Cleveland a title, and I think LeBron made it clear from the get-go. You know, I might not stay the whole time. This is let's try to win a title, and then who knows? Well, if I was, and now we're in the who knows standpoint of this whole. If I was Dan Gilbert, though, I would sign Butler, who's got more in his contract left than Paul George. Right? That would make much more sense as an owner. So if LeBron leaves, at least I have Jimmy Butler and Kyrie Irving. So Butler would be the guy going to Cleveland, right? Yeah, but uh, I, I don't think they can make the best trade for Butler. I think there's – if you're Chicago, why do you want Kevin Love for Jimmy Butler? Kevin Love's 28 years old. What What is he going to do for you? He's going to make you a 500 team. Like, I, I would want picks and young players. And unless they can get a three-teamer and get a third team involved, I just think other teams can, can trump any Jimmy Butler offer. The Paul George thing is – you know, that one makes sense on paper. We wrote about it on The Ringer, I think, a week and a half ago. Jonathan Jarks wrote something about it. But, you know, because Love's under contract for a while. If you're Indiana, you get somebody who's still a top 25 player in the league who's now actually underrated because he was marginalized in Cleveland. And now you can make him the centerpiece with Miles Turner and try to stay relevant. Um, and if you're, if you're Cleveland, you're all in on Paul George for one year. If he leaves and LeBron leaves, now you're, you know, now you don't have to worry about paying Kevin Love $25 million a year to be in the middle of the road if they want to rebuild. It makes sense. And I actually think you put Paul George on the Cavs, they just have a better chance of, of beating Golden State. I think what they yes, yes. What they learned this year is you can't beat this Golden State team playing Thompson and Love at the same time. So go, Cleveland had this fundamental dilemma of yep. we have our best four players but we can only play three of the best four players against Golden State. Like that's you're handcuffed at that point. Yep, that became so, pretty clear in the finals. There were matchup why, problems they couldn't overcome. So, so let's. But wait a second, though. Why are you sleeping on the Lakers with this whole oh, thing? Come you on. know I hate the Lakers. I'm a Celtics fan, but Listen, you have Magic Bill. Johnson, LeBron's oh. idol. You have this is the biggest franchise, and you were saying like I heard you say in the car about how the Clippers are are, you know, moving in on the Lakers' territory. I feel the opposite. I feel like the Clippers missed their window, and they have this aging team that they're kind of stuck with their cap. And you look at it, there's two football teams here now. There's two baseball teams. You have the Lakers. You have two soccer teams. You have a hockey team. It's very easy to become completely irrelevant if you're the Clippers. And the difference between now and then is, like, in the old days, people had Clippers season tickets because they kept them the coast go see the other teams, right? That's why I have Clippers season tickets because it's a much easier way to go see LeBron and Durant or whoever's coming in. Now with the secondary market, you can just cherry pick tickets whenever you want. I mean, to me, it's like there's so much urgency with this Clippers situation where it, the moment they become irrelevant, they're going to lose their season ticket base. So what, what? you could say 79-year-old Jerry West is is um, moves the needle, but really does it? What's he going to do? What do you do with this roster? LeBron's never shown an interest in playing with kids. He did that in Cleveland. He wants to play with high IQ veteran players who are established, and he doesn't have to teach. He doesn't want to be a mentor. He's All right, but play, hold on, though. Flip that around. You're acting like he'd have to play with the young players. If they were able to get LeBron and you get one more free agent, you could flip those young players for, for veteran players, right? Yeah, but... Like, you could... At that point, you could trade Brandon Ingram for Jimmy Butler. and they, like You could very easily stockpile a team using the assets they have. They've been picking in the top seven now for four straight years. Boy, that, so, that's best-case scenario. I think the Lakers are dysfunctional. 
I don't trust Magic to pull it off. I don't think LeBron's led. Not, but it's not Magic, though. It's Palinka. Palinka is the guy running the team. Magic is the face. Magic is the guy who has the meetings. Magic is the guy that he's the public face. He's the, he's the friendly, familiar face for the Lakers fans. But Palinka is the guy running this team. And I think he's a smart guy. Look, the Lakers are, as you said, the most dysfunctional ownership, you know, other than James Dolan and maybe uh, that's probably it. But I, I, I think there's a little more function now. Well, you I mean, and I, I just, think we have to give it a chance. You and I, okay, we, we, it, well, I'll just say this. You and I completely disagree on LeBron and the Lakers. That uh, That's my takeaway on this 10 minutes. I think there's almost no chance. You think it's the leader in the clubhouse. And it's, I, but why would he go to the Lakers? Where, where, how does that get him closer to a title to play with, with no, why would Chris LeBron, Paul in his mid-30s and Blake Griffin, who's had no, been in the hospital eight times? Because I think LeBron wants to own things. I think it's a more progressive ownership group. It's a richer owner. It's Chris Paul. It's a new arena. Wait a second. LeBron wants to own things. I, I heard this uh, on an ESPN show today, too. It's illegal for him to own things. You can't own anything if you're a player. You can't do wink-wink deals. It's illegal. This is how... You know, if it ever came out that they had a wink-wink deal with LeBron for either of these teams, they, they would lose like 10 first-round picks. You can't do it. Mm. You, can, you can say like, hey, we'll talk about it after, but you, you just can't do it. It's impossible. Well, then that's what you say. But you're not going to ever have a chance to own any of the Lakers. They'll never give up 1% of that. That you, you know for so? sure. Oh, God, no. The Bus family, by the way, is not that wealthy. You know who's wealthy? You know, wealthy is, is Ballmer. Wealthy is Paul Allen. By the way, Dan Gilbert's wealthy now. Yeah, but the- you, talk about, you talk about dysfunction, and I like Ballmer. He's on my podcast. I think he's a smart dude who yeah. has finally figured out I have to take control of this. But for three years, he didn't, and he let Doc Rivers try to be the coach and the GM, and it was a disaster. They missed their window. Like We're going to look back at this decade. And the two things that are going to stand out are how the hell did Oklahoma City trade James Harden and how the hell did the Clippers never get past round two when they had two of the best eight players in the league. That's, those are going to be the two legacies of this decade for when we scratch our heads and go, what the hell just happened? So, you know, I think they waited too long. And now I, I honestly think they missed their window because, hey, you know, great point guards do not age well. They, you look at like somebody like Chris who's six feet tall, who's been in the league for 12 years, what's the track record of a 34-year-old, six-foot-tall point guard like really kicking ass in the NBA? It doesn't happen. All right, quickly, I got a minute left. Bill Simmons, yeah. Celtics. Give me one minute. Yeah. What are the Celtics after, after the draft day? By the start of next year, what's the Celtics yeah. starting five? I think Hayward, I would say 80% chance. Yeah, I agree. I think he's involved. I would bet on Jason Tatum as the guy they pick. Yeah. I still feel like they made that trade because they feel like there's a chance for another trade. They basically turned a dollar into into a dollar twenty, and now it's like it's Porzingis. Could it be Jimmy Butler? Who is it? But I, I, my guess would be either that number three pick or next year's Brooklyn pick is going to be turned into another player. If Gordon Hayward and Jason Tatum arrive, they're absolutely a better offensive team. That's not, yeah. that's not even debatable. They're, they're, I, by the I, way, it closes Washington's window. It closes Toronto's window. It makes it yeah. very difficult for Milwaukee. If you can add two shooters to Isaiah Thomas and Avery Bradley, and Horford's a decent scorer, that is yeah. absolutely closer to Cleveland. No question. I'll tell you this, though. I heard you talk about Lonzo on the way in. And I, for the first time today, I started to feel some pangs about the fact that the Celtics passed on Lonzo. And I know why they did it. You can't play Lonzo and Isaiah in the backcourt together. You're going to get torched defensively. But, I, you know, you were saying Lonzo's a star because of his dad and because of the attention his dad brought him. I think Lonzo's a star. I, I, like, to me, it's like watching Curry in college and, and Durant when he was at Texas. There's just certain guys that – you're just transfixed by on TV in college. It rarely happens. I think the guy the guy has a chance to be special. I don't know if it'll happen, but it's possible. And you put him at the Lakers with Magic and the fans and the right guys around him. It really he really could be special. Oh, I I I, I would be disappointed if they didn't make the move. Bill Simmons, the Ringer dot com podcast guest, Malcolm Gladwell, Judd Apatow. Wish you'd stop by more often. I know you're a busy guy. You're running stuff. You're a managerial type, but I'd like to see you more <laughs> often, Billy. This summer I'm coming in for like a three hour. Let's just go at it, Hank. Yeah, that, that, that'd be that'd just be go. that'd be great. But I I'm just tired go. of these promises. Why don't you just stop by the couch? Well, they, 
Did you raise the Did you raise the couch so it's at almost <laughs> close to eye level to you, where you're I'll not lording you over people? For one day, I'll raise yeah. the couch a foot. Oh, okay, I'm in. <laughs> I'm coming in. <laughs> All, right, All right, thanks, Colin. Catch the herd from noon to three Eastern on iHeartRadio and FS1. Porzingis leaving the New York Knicks. Everybody, I'm sure, on social media is lighting him up. Uh, but Porzingis doesn't fit their offense right now with Jeff Hornacek. And if I could get, I could get the number three pick in the draft and maybe another first rounder. And then I could get a Jalen Brown and maybe a Jay Crowder to make the salaries work. Listen, I, I don't think it's the worst thing in the world. The Knicks have one really good player right now and then a bunch of old guys they don't want. You could literally reboot the entire Knicks franchise by giving up Porzingis. You could get a very good defensive guard in Jalen Brown. You could then draft with a number three pick, De'Aaron Fox at point. You could get with a number eight pick, Lowry Markinen, who plays like Porzingis, who has some of his skill set. And then you could from... The Celtics potentially, if you really grind it, get another first-round pick or two more first-round picks. You can't fall in love with players. Fall in like with players. Don't fall in love with them. Outside of quarterbacks in the NFL and an occasional Durant, Curry, LeBron superstar, fall in like with players. Don't fall in love with Porzingis. What did Porzingis do this year? What did he do? If I could get... The third pick in the draft, another first round pick, and a couple of starters in Jalen Brown and maybe a maybe a Kelly Olinick or a Jay Crowder, I'd do it. Don't fall in love with him. Reboot the franchise. You got a bunch of old guys and malcontents. Now you say you want to get rid of Phil Jackson, but if Phil Jackson is able to get a third pick and another first round pick, and maybe another in Jalen Brown and another starter, go for it. You can get a lot for him. But don't fall in love with these players. That's the biggest mistake teams in this sports landscape do. They fall in love with guys. Fall in like with them. Bill Belichick falls in like with guys. He falls in like with them. You know who fell in love with people? The Yankees front office. The Red Sox, when they had Theo Epstein around, would fall in like with guys and then trade them a year where they still had value. The Yankees held on to guys for too long and they didn't have the market value. So I have no problem moving Porzingis if I can get multiple picks and multiple starters. I don't have a problem at all. The Knicks are a mess. That would also signal some hope. That would give you some hope. Right now they have no hope. First round picks, starters, that's hope. Youth, that's hope. Uh, That's the first thing. I want to shift gears before Doug Gottlieb comes on. This this NFL story is interesting. This NFL story. There's always been something called NFL face. And NFL general managers and scouts consider this. A good-looking quarterback, a quarterback with a cool factor, can sell and win the locker room. Very interesting. NFL Network has been listing their top 100 players. And this is players voting on the best 100 players in the league. Dak Prescott, 14th. Dak Prescott finished above Big Ben, Andrew Luck, Russell Wilson, Marcus Mariota. And think about this. All these other guys have more years, more stats, more wins, more accomplishment. Dak Prescott finished in the voting above Drew Brees, Big Ben, Russell Wilson, Cam Newton, Matt Stafford, Marcus Mariota, Andrew Luck, Phillip Rivers, Jameis Winston. This goes to the cool factor. And it's, I've said this before, if you had every quarterback available on the open market and you considered everything as a GM, including age, that you wouldn't go get Big Ben, Breeze, or Brady now because they're too old. If you had every quarterback on the market that you could sign to a five-year deal, you wouldn't draft Breeze, Brady, or Big Ben. A good GM wouldn't. The top four or five guys would be Aaron Rodgers, number one, Andrew Luck, number two, Derek Carr, Russell Wilson, Matt Ryan. That's your top five unquestionably, and Dak finish above Russell Wilson and Andrew Luck. Think about that. Andrew Luck, Andrew Luck took a bad roster to the AFC Championship. Russell Wilson's gone to two Super Bowls, but Russell Wilson's not that relatable, maybe too religious for some players, no cool factor. Andrew Luck runs a book club. He's got a neck beard. It shows you that the cool factor works in a locker room. 
that despite Super Bowls and success from Russell Wilson and Andrew Luck, the reason they work in the locker room is because they win, and you can't deny it. They just win a lot. They're just really good. The stats don't lie. But Dak Prescott, with a year under his belt, with the best O-line, the best young running back, good offensive coaches, players vote him above Russell Wilson and Andrew Luck. And it's the cool factor. This is what I've said about Dak Prescott. It's not his arm. It's not his legs. It's not his size. It's not. There is an it quality to him, and it works in the locker room. And that is a real thing. It's called quarterback face. I said it all year. I kept telling Christine, he looks like a franchise quarterback. The square jaw, the confidence, you watch him on the field, he doesn't get nervous. It is a real component to being a star quarterback. It's the cool factor. It's the it factor. It, you can lead alpha males. I think his arm is okay. I think his feet are good, not great. They're not as good as Russell Wilson's. His arm's not as good as Andrew Luck. But there is a cool factor with Dak that you can't deny. And players now have him right behind Derek Carr and the 14th best player in this league. And he hasn't proven anything close to that. All three hours of The Herd are always streaming on The Herd channel on the iHeartRadio app. Chris Mannix, great reporter for The Vertical. Their draft show is Woj, Chris Mannix, Bobby Marks, and Tom Crean. That's Thursday, 6.30 on Yahoo Sports via the Coward Global Satellite Network in New York. Okay, let's start. Let's start with Paul George. He's at the center of a lot of this talk. So, you know, first of all, um, if you asked LeBron James and you said, LeBron, Dan Gilbert just fired the GM or whatever, it didn't work. Would you like Paul George or Jimmy Butler? Because I think Dan Gilbert likes Jimmy Butler because of the contract and Dan Gilbert's a billionaire and he doesn't want to get Paul George and have Paul and LeBron leave and he's stuck with one guy. If you ask LeBron, Chris who he would rather play for, and he has some influence here, Jimmy Butler or Paul George, who would he say? Oh, I think in a vacuum, it's Paul George. Um, You know, Paul George and Jimmy Butler are both effective offensive players, effective defensive players, but when you look at what Paul George can bring to a matchup against Golden State, it is high-level defense against a player like Kevin Durant, and there may be a size issue if you're trying to match Jimmy Butler up with Kevin Durant. I mean, look, the— Everything Cleveland does moving forward is, is, is trying to close the gap between themselves and the Golden State Warriors. And I think there's a strong belief within Cleveland that Paul George does that. Obviously, the contract is a bigger issue. How much you give up for a potential rental is a huge issue. But Paul George, uh, in that type of scenario, is a much uh, more attractive asset in a matchup with Golden State. Who else, knowing he wants to be a Laker outside of Cleveland, because I think Cleveland would make the move, um, who else would take that risk on Paul George? Oh, I think there's a lot of teams that would take the risk, Colin, because even though a player says he wants to play somewhere, it's one thing to say that when you're playing for a 30-win team in a city that you don't seem to want to be in. It's another thing to do it when you're playing for a 55- or a 60-win team with teammates that you like playing for. I mean, use a couple of examples on both coasts. you got the Portland Trailblazers, whole bunch of draft picks. They have three in the first round, a great young backcourt. They could make a decent offer for Paul George and then say, Paul, we've got all these guys. We can offer you more money. We won't, Why don't you want to stay here? Boston, even better example. The Celtics, you add Paul George to the Celtics and you don't have to break up that core of, uh, of starting caliber players. That's a 60-win team next season, Colin. That's how good they are with Paul George in that mix. And guys that go to Boston and play for for Boston and are in that atmosphere and around the intensity of that sports town. They don't walk away, least of which they don't walk away when a max level contract that can pay them 40 plus million dollars is on the table. So I think the number of suitors for Paul George is going to be significant over the next week or so. Gut feeling where he lands. I think the Lakers will eventually cobble together some type of deal. Um, I don't know yet if they're fully engaged in this process, but talking to a couple of teams out there, there's a lot of buzz that the Lakers could put together some kind of package with their young players, maybe the back, uh, the the, last, uh, the lesser of their first-round picks. I think it's 27 in yeah. this year's draft. Um, they could put together something that gets a deal done for Paul George. The Lakers, as recently as the last couple of days, they've kind of laid back and waited for this process to play out because Indiana right now is still largely treating Paul George like he's a guy under contract for multiple years. 
He's not. He's got one year left of his contract, so the value isn't anywhere near as high. Once Indiana comes down a little bit, I think the Lakers will engage, and I think more likely than not, a deal with L.A. gets done. Let's talk about the Porzingis story that breaks in the last 12 hours. Listen, I, I, I tend to believe, except for NFL quarterbacks or a guy like LeBron or Durant, I fall in like with guys, not love with them. If I could get the third pick, a next year number one pick, I could get Jalen Brown and Jay Crowder, I'd move Porzingis. I, I like him. I don't think he's Tim Duncan, do you think this thing even comes to fruition or it's just blather on the internet? What do you make of it? I don't think a deal gets done. And, and I've talked to a few teams that who, you know, first of all, they're scratching their heads that this is even on the table. There are a number of teams that have reached out to the Knicks over the last six months to a year, once things started to get a little complicated in New York and asked about Porzingis, and they've been almost universally rebuffed. The Knicks have always said, this is our guy, we're building the franchise around him long term. That clearly has changed. They're clearly interested now in taking offers for Porzingis, but the asking price, I believe, is, is and is going to be uh, extremely high for Porzingis. You are basically going to have to mortgage everything you have if you're a team with a lot of assets to get him out of there. Maybe you think it's worth it. I mean, Kristaps Porzingis, I believe, is going to reinvent the center position eventually in the same way Dirk, Dirk Nowitzki reinvented power forward. So there is an appeal to bringing him in at 21 years old with two more years uh, remaining on his rookie contract. But man, it, it is going to be a steep, steep price that you'd have to pay to extract him from New York. All right. Uh, Chris Paul Spurs, I thought, was dead a week ago, but you have information that it's not dead. Well, it, it's not that it's, it's, it's direct information here. It's just that San Antonio makes a big move that goes under the radar because they're San Antonio and it's absolute chaos out there uh, right now. They convince Pau Gasol to opt out of that contract, $16 million next year, which would have been a free agency killer for this team in terms of lining up a max level player. Now they get Gasol out and it doesn't clear max level cap space. They'd have to renounce some guys. Manu Ginobili probably has to go. Tony Parker might have to go. Gasol would have to sign for a much smaller number before they make any deal. But this is as close as it's ever been to being realistic for Chris Paul to actually go down to San Antonio. I mean, he was never going to go down down there and play for the mid-level exception. I don't care what the Spurs situation was. They were never going to be able to take him away from a Laker or from a Clipper deal that could be worth north of $200 million. Now, if they can find a way to create four-year max-level cap space in the same way they did for LaMarcus Aldridge a couple of years ago, they have a real opportunity, I think, to strike and grab a Chris Paul. This is Honestly, Colin, this is as landscape changing as, as you've had today with, uh, with the Spurs making that deal. And nobody's talking about it because of everything else going on and because of the San Antonio Spurs. Jerry West to the Clippers. Why? What do you make of it? Well, look, the Clippers have a very novice front office, some very smart people in Lawrence Frank and Doc Rivers, but not a lot of experienced hands and certainly nobody with the experience level uh, of Jerry West. Now, Jerry West, at almost 80 years old, is not going to be uh, in involved in the day to day of everything. He is going to be uh, a sounding board, maybe a little bit more uh, for this team. And that has incredible value for Doc Rivers uh, and for Lawrence Frank and rebuilding this team. But look, Jerry West can't create draft picks that the Clippers have traded away over the years. He can't convince Chris Paul or J.J. Redick or Blake Griffin to uh, to take less money uh, to help build this team out uh, moving forward. So it's a good move. It has almost no downside to it. But I wouldn't look at it as some kind of panacea for this team as they try to re, uh, you know, build on what they have. Jerry West, does he get the Clippers an interview with LeBron? Uh, last minute here, Chris Mannix joining us. What do you think LeBron's future is in Cleveland? Well, it got certainly more complicated with the David Griffin situation. And look, LeBron, when he won that championship, that was his out. He, did, he fulfilled his destiny or fulfilled his promise to Northeast Ohio. He wants to stay, but I think winning that championship gives him an opportunity to go. And now a, a major piece has been removed from the, from the Cavaliers' uh, situation there with David Griffin gone. Now you have LeBron and Dan Gilbert potentially on a collision course. You've got two guys that really don't like each other all that much that are in an arranged marriage now facing off. So we'll see what happens. Whoever they bring in has got to make a significant move. They've got to help this team get closer to beating Golden State. It's going to depend, I think, on how the season next year finishes. If it goes the exact same way, I can see LeBron going somewhere. I think the Lakers are probably in the pole position. If they can find a way to win, of course, that changes it altogether. Chris Mannix on that draft show. That's Thursday at 6 
6.30 Eastern on Yahoo Sports. Woj, Chris, Bobby Marks, and Tom Crean. In New York, Chris Mannix. Thanks, bud. My pleasure. What do the wise guys wear? I get asked that from time to time. The answer is the new gear from the HerdNow.com merchandise store. We are now officially open for business. We have all the apparel diehard Herd fans need to represent the show. Go to the HerdNow.com. If you don't, that's a you problem. And that's a you problem is one of our shirts. Check it out. The HerdNow.com. The HerdNow.com store is open for business today.